Okay, for part B of this question, they're asking how long it takes the plane to complete one revolution. And in physics terms, one revolution around a circle is known as the period. So we're trying to find capital T. And we know that the period of rotation is somehow related to the centripetal acceleration. And there's equations associated with that. So before we go anywhere, and this is what I recommend for any circular motion question, let's finish off our triangle. For part A, we figured out that the gravitational force was 4.33 newtons, and that gave us a mass of 0.44 kilograms. And all we did was solve this very simple triangle that we see in the upper right. We solved for Fg using cosine. So let's finish solving this triangle. Let's see if we can figure out what F net is. Now remember, in circular motion, F net is F centripetal, and that's gonna help us out a great deal. If we can figure out what F net is, then we can figure out what F centripetal is, because they're the same, and then we can move on. So to solve for F net in that equation, we see that F net is opposite to the angle, and we know the hypotenuse is five newtons. So let's use our sine law. So we're not even gonna solve for T directly yet, we're just gonna say sine 30 is opposite F net over hypotenuse, five newtons. And when you do this and solve for F net, which is centripetal, it's the exact same thing. Our centripetal force becomes 2.5 newtons when I solve that equation. Now we know F net is MA. So it stands to reason that my centripetal force is MA, except we use a special A, we use A centripetal. So MAC is 2.5 newtons. And for AC, we have a choice. We have two equations that we can use for AC. I'll put them over on the left, and I'll put them in a different color so they're not confusing each other. So triple acceleration we can solve by going V squared over R. Or centripetal acceleration we can solve by using 4 pi squared R over T squared. And since capital T is what we're looking for, I'm going to choose that second equation. So my formula simply looks like this. Mass times 4 pi squared r over t squared is equal to 2.5 newtons. And I'm just going to rearrange this formula and solve it for t squared. So moving the thing down a little bit so we can see what we're doing, I end up with t squared as follows. So t squared is m times 4 times pi squared times r over 2.5. Now we know the mass from the previous question was 0.44 kilograms. 4 pi squared we can easily figure out in our calculator. We know the bottom is 2.5. Our only unknown is this r, the radius of the circle. So there's one more step and that's just to simply solve for what r is equivalent to. And all we got to do is look at our original picture and see if we can find r. And if you look at our original sketch, it tells you the length of the string is 1.5 meters. So finally that comes into play. They give you this angle of 30 degrees with the vertical. We're trying to find this horizontal distance because that's the radius of the circle that you can see. From the dotted circle to the central dotted line is R. I'm going to highlight this triangle and we're going to solve for R. So if we quickly label R right at the bottom, we can see that R is opposite to our 30 degree angle. The hypotenuse is 1.5. So if I simply write sine 30 is opposite over hypotenuse and solve for R, I get R is 0 0.75 meters. And now it's just a little bit of algebra to plug it back in for T squared. So T squared is going to be equivalent to my mass which was 0.44 kilograms times 4 times pi squared times r which we've just figured out to be 0.75 meters all divided by 2.5 newtons that's equal to t squared solving it and taking the square root gives me my final answer of t equal to 2.28 seconds